Hello everyone and welcome to the ALO Gaming channel. Uh, welcome if it's your first time here and welcome back if you are a returning viewer. Um, it's good to have you. Now, today we are going to be starting a brand new series, Booster Blaster Build. Uh, so this is the project that I was working on during the summer uh, last year. So if you're new to the channel, um, I've said before that this is to document my journey through college uh, as a mature student going back to study game development. And in first year, I had this idea to create this channel and I had this idea of recording everything that I was going to work on and put it up uh, and I got two series out of it. So I have my graveyard and my space race. Uh, now we're on to the bit during the summer. Uh, so if you're thinking, oh great, it's it's during the summer, we'll get to see everything that he did and there'll be no little gaps because he was working on stuff in college. You underestimate me because I still forget to, um, to, to open OBS sometimes. Uh, now, I don't know. I have a, a couple of videos for this series so far uh, before I went back into college and had to start doing other stuff. Uh, but we'll crack on and see how we get on. So as you can see, now we have a blank Unity scene in front of us. So we are seeing this from the very, very start. Uh, so we're going to see everything that I do to set this up. So the idea for this game was I wanted to make a kind of roguelike spaceship not quite platformery, but like get around the obstacles, get from one side to the other. So two and a half D side scrolling ship fly type game. Uh, it will make more sense once you see uh, what I am doing and, and what I start bringing in. So this starts out uh, and still is actually a, a proof of concept prototype. Basically, it's, it's uh, not at a full game yet. It's still using placeholder assets and that kind of stuff for the most part. So I'm going to start by bringing in a cube, just zeroing it out, just to make things handier for myself. Uh, and this is going to be the start of the level. So this is going to be the floor, I would assume, or the wall. This is going to be some part of the level. Uh, uh, so it'll have a, the game will end up having moving platforms and a ship that flies around. Uh, using physics. If you saw my last series, the space race, you, I spoke a little bit about using physics to move spaceships, which I didn't do in that series, but I do it in this one, so at least we've got that. So here we have my ground. And you may think it's not very wide, but it doesn't really matter because the ship shouldn't be touching it, because if you touch the ground, you die. If you touch any of the walls, you die. If you get hit by an enemy, you die. If you get hit by an obstacle, you die. Uh, so it's going to be one of those kind of frustrating, inspired by the likes of Celeste, Flappy Bird, Super Meat Boy, those kinds of things. Uh, annoying as hell game that gets really addictive. Uh, in theory, that is the plan. And let's just make it red because, you know, red is bad. So don't touch the red part. Uh, the ground is lava. If anybody played that game when they were kids, jumping across the furniture. Um so now we're going to do another cube and presumably either make a ceiling or a wall or some form of obstacles. Now, I didn't go through too much in terms of sketching out the level design for these because it was just a prototype and I wanted to see if I could get something that worked uh, and if the, the actual gameplay that I was envisioning would be enjoyable. Um, so I just throw some, th some things together. I have spoken before about not sketching things the way I should, and that's why I find level design quite difficult, because if I'm just trying to make it up out of my own head, it, it, it's I don't know where things are supposed to go or how things are supposed to look, so it is always a good idea to sketch out what you want to do for design stuff so that you have something to work up. Like It doesn't have to end up like what you sketch, but at least you have a starting off point for what you want it to look like. Um, but for prototyping and that kind of thing, it doesn't really matter. Um, so what I'm actually doing is creating a very, very basic placeholder ship. Because you can't have a spaceship game without a spaceship. So I'm just going to use cylinders and cubes to make a very, very simple ship that we can then test. Uh, and then we'll go off and make a kind of a, a version, a ship 2.0 or 1.5, I guess. Um, which will be another placeholder, but it'll be closer to the finished product. Uh, 
So it's basically just gonna make these up. Uh, okay, um, sorry, just checked my phone there. Um, I've got a college assignment that's apparently due today that I haven't finished, so right on track for, you know, the year. The year is almost over. I'm assuming that some of this will be, it'll be fine. I mean, college is closed because of the whole COVID-19 thing. We'll say it's difficult to get the work done when you don't have time to, to interact with the teachers as much. Uh, a little bit more difficult. I'll get it done. I always get things done in the end, uh, even if it means I'm going to have to stay up all night and try and get that finished. Something to look forward to. In the meantime, we're doing this. Uh, I'm making a very simple uh, kind of phallic-shaped ship to fly around with. Uh, but yeah. And that's the thing, like when you're prototyping, you don't need to spend too much time on making stuff look pretty. It's you. It's basically just functional. Will it work? I mean, I could have just done it with a capsule. Uh, I'm not worried about it looking like a ship at all, even if it does look like a weird ship. Um, it doesn't need to look like anything. I, I could have just used a cube uh, and just made sure that once I had added the scripts to it and everything else, that it works. Because if it works with a cube or a, a cylinder or a sphere or any, any object, it'll work with. Uh, anything that you bring in, any model. Um, I am trying to do this all myself, so I'm trying not to download any assets from the Unity store, from the asset store, or use any outside assets. So, uh, so, uh, and I'm getting better at my naming conventions. So, even to the point of using starboard and port. Uh, for those of you that, that don't know, starboard is right, port is left. And the only reason I can remember that is that somebody, because I could never remember it until somebody said, uh, I'm right-handed and I'm a star, so starboard is right, and I am right-handed. So sorry for any lefties out there. I don't know how uh, you could you could remember by saying that uh, starboard is right, and no, I don't know how you could do that. Change that into an insult to right-handed people. So I parented all the objects, the, the different parts of the ship to that rocket part, uh, empty game object. So if I just move the rocket, it will move everything else that is childed to it. Um, it all rotates together, it all moves together. That's handy. We're not going to want to rotate in that direction um, because it is 2D or 2.5D. I will have obstacles kind of traveling along that Z axis, but the ship itself can only move on the X and Y. Uh, just to give that little bit a 3D feeling in a 2D game. This is uh, just a, a design choice for me. Um, I don't know what happened there. Yeah, okay. So adding a rigid body to the parent object. Things should be fine. There you go, yeah. I'm just making sure that, that the gravity works. And even though this is a spaceship game, I will have gravity on it. Uh, I will up the drag on it. So, hey, there we go, and it falls. So we have a ship and the ground, and it, the ship can collide with the ground, so at least we have a starting point for a game. Um, everything else after this is just adding little layers to the onion uh, and fleshing out just a little bit of a prototype for things to see how it goes, see what we can make work. Um, just move that light out of the way because it's, I mean, it's not in the way, but it doesn't matter where you put it. It's a direction light, so that's fine. And... Yeah, we're going to create a folder called script scripts. So already I am getting better at keeping my naming conventions uh, pretty good and keeping my scene, my scene, my project, project tab, and I hope my hierarchy um, organized so that I know where to find things. Because uh, if you saw the space race series, you there was a point where I had thousands of 
uh, debris objects, uh, and they would have just taken up the project would have been fine, but they would have just taken up the entire hierarchy. But if I hadn't um, nested them under an empty game object that I could then collapse down so that you couldn't see them all. Similar to this rocket ship, like I can collapse the rocket ship down so you no longer see what's underneath it. And if I ever need to access these individual parts of it, I can then just open it up and, and select which, whichever I want. Uh, and in bigger projects, you will end up eventually have a lot of different items in your project folders. So same thing, you want to create folders to kind of just keep it organized so that you know where to find it, you're not scrolling through. If everything's just hig higgledy-piggledy in there, um, you're going to have to kind of scroll through and read every every single thing to find what you're looking for. And that can just be a pain in the ass. So, you know, create a script folder, a materials folder, a textures folder, and then every material goes in the materials folder, every texture in the textures folder. Um, and if they get too big, then you can also create folders within the folders so that you could say maybe have a player material folder within the materials folder and an enemies material folder and that kind of stuff so that you just know where you need to go to get what you're looking for. There's also a search bar in Unity. So if you remember the name of what you have, uh, what you saved it as, then you can just search for it, which is a very handy thing to have. Um, so Visual Studio. So we're going to immediately, right, I've got a ship, I've got a ground, I'm jumping into coding now. I've said this before that uh, when you're designing a game on your own, there's so many different things to do. Now, I didn't do a to-do list for this either, which is something that I need to get better at. So I need to start uh, sketching out my levels and making to-do lists of stuff, uh, kind of going with trying to get the important stuff done first. But I think in, in, in this case, I'm actually doing it right. I have a ship and the ground. The ship can collide with the ground. I've already tested that. So now I'm trying to get the ship moving. And then when the ship is moving, then I can start building the level around it. That is my core gameplay loop, is just having the ship moving from A to B. And then I start making obstacles for the to, to prevent the ship from getting there or make it more difficult for the ship to get there. Uh, so I am actually going to the right, I, uh, the right way of doing it. There is no right or wrong way of doing it, really. Um, at least if you're working on your own project with no set deadline, uh, you, can, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, and take however long you want. Um, slightly different if you have assignments or if you're working professionally and have deadlines and that kind of thing that you need to then you need to prioritize a little bit more um so and using my infamous serialized fields but because this is not a college assignment my teacher cannot complain about them this time unless he ever finds this channel and watches these videos and then he will give me an absolute bollocking uh so we've got the main thrust and the rcf thrusts uh the RCS thrust, that is, RCS is, oh, I want to think it's reaction control, something, reactive, reactive control. So I, for main thrust is going to be up and down, and the RCS thrust I would imagine is for rotation. Uh, another reason that naming conventions are important uh, is that you need to name things so that you know what they are. Or, or if anybody else comes in to, to look at your script, say you're bringing somebody on to help you with the programming, uh, they need to know what, what everything is. Uh, so that probably would be better to name that rotation speed, uh, just to make it look, because looking back at this, I mean, I think I know what I meant. RCS, reaction control system, reaction control something. Uh, me just trying to be, um, you know, technical, but looking back, I can go, oh, is the main thrust, what, you know, RCS thrust, a main thrust, sounds like they should kind of do the same thing, um, but they don't. I'm having some issues here, and that needs to be keycode dot space. There we go. Remember that. Uh, so if input, so if you press the space bar, something needs to happen. So what's going to happen when you press the space bar? What is going to happen when I press the space bar? Do I want to do a for loop? Oh, I'm trying to add forces, yes. Um, I had great difficulty. Like, and I think probably still, if I go back to uh, to coding something that I haven't done for a while, um, anytime I went back to try and move an object in a game, 
through code, I'd always forget how it was done. Like I'd know it was transform.translate something or other, but I'd forget exactly what I needed to type to get it to work. Same with the, the ad force. Now, because I've been using ad force recently, uh, I actually know that I need to declare the rigid body and then it's rigid body dot ad force. Um, Whereas here, I'm just going, I know it's something to do with force and add force, and um, I don't know how to quite to get the force onto the the object. Um, but if you think about it, force is physics, and the only way you can have an object that is, interacts with physics is by having a rigid body on it. So you need to access the rigid body to add the physics forces onto it. So um, I'm sure I'm just going to play around for a little while. Uh, and try and get it to work. This is, I've spoken about this before in uh, in previous videos about the joys of coding. I quite enjoy it. It is very much a problem solving exercise, basically, um, where you know that it's possible and you know might know half of how to do it. Uh, or you might not know any of how to do it, you just know it's possible. Um, and then it's all about getting it to work. And I quite enjoy that because, I don't know, glutton for punishment maybe? I don't know. I quite enjoy it anyway. Um, and then you get that, that feeling of accomplishment when you figure it out and it all works the way it's supposed to end. You kind of go, yay! Woo! Cool dance. Um, so I can't seem to figure out the rigid body at this stage. Um, or the, the force. So I'm going back to transform to translate. And as I said, I even sometimes forget. But Unity pops up little help things. So if you if you know the start of it, you can look at the little Unity help tools and they'll tell you, well, if this is what you're doing, it needs to have this, this, and this in it. Um, so I'm just translating it. New vector three, zero on the x-axis, main thrust on the y. So it's going to go up when you press the space bar and zero on the z. So even just that one line of code, if I drag the script onto the the rocket, which I'm doing, um, it should, in theory, when I press spacebar, make the rocket go up or like jump up. It won't make it move up, really, I don't think. So I press spacebar and the rocket's disappeared. But if you look over here, its position on the y-axis has gone incredibly up. Incredibly up? That's bad English. And it's slowly falling back down because the rigid body is using gravity. Um, because my main thrust is 100. So I'm, you know, you press spacebar, it goes 100 up. 100 unity units, I guess. Um, and i just watching it slowly fall back down. I kind of hope that I wait for it to hit the ground. Um, although looking at the... Oh, it missed the ground. Well, that's... Not good. Um, so that's not going to work. So let's try something else. Aha. Now I'm thinking rigid bodies. We need rigid bodies for physics. Whether this means I'll figure out um, that I need to use rigid body to add force, I don't know. Uh, equal to null, don't need to equal it to null if you're doing it up here, if you're just declaring it up here. Because um, if you don't put it equal to something, it's automatically null. Null just means that it's not equal to anything. Um, and then you set it down in, in the start function. So in the start function, you're going to say, well, this rigid body that I'm creating, which is the lowercase or rigid body, uh, it's equal, it's going to be, we're going to make it so that it's the rigid body that is on this component, this, this game object. So when the game starts, it's going to go to the rocket ship game object, and it's going to go through, down through each um, component on it until it finds a rigid body component, and then it's going to say, okay, that's what he's looking for, so that is now the lowercase or rigid body. Uh, and then you can access that using a uh, script. And I do figure it out, rigid body to add force, add relative force. Um, yeah, uh, add force, not relative force. I mean, in theory, I would assume that add relative. It says it as it relative to its uh, 
to its coordinate system. So I guess add force is more like adding force on, in the world space and adding relative force is doing it in the local uh, space of the object. I think, I assume, I don't, I, it's never been explained to me um, and I've never looked it up. So, I mean, I might do that and let you know in the next video what it is or if there's any coders watching this who actually know what I'm trying to say or know what this, what the difference is, then just comment below because that would uh, help me out a lot, uh, help me learn. I'm always trying to learn. Um, so I'm going to add force. Vector 3. Now, I can't do that because main thrust is not a vector 3. It is a float. So what I would probably have to do is have vector three dot up by multiplied by main thrust. Um, I could do that, or I could do a uh, vector three of zero for the x, main thrust for the y, and zero for the z. But I don't think that would work. I think that's what I'm trying to do there. We'll see if this works. Um, my only concern about that is that I'm not, like normally you would multiply it by a speed and main thrust is the speed. In you know, And then you can multiply that by time, not delta time to smooth it out. Oh, but no, that seems to work. It goes up, it falls down. Um, And it would have been interesting to see what would have happened if I had to press the space bar when it was lying down flat. Because uh, that would, you know, oh, that would uh, say whether adding relative force, would it move it up in the in the world space? Because the, the world space y-axis is never going to change. It's always going to be up down. But on the object, if it falls over, then the y-axis is going to be horizontal. So pressing space, would it have shot up or would it have shot across? And then testing that with add force uh, and see if that's what the difference is. That is one way I could find out is just to test it. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm busy, so I'm not going to test it right now. If I was actually doing this right now, instead of watching it back in a video, I'm, I would do that uh, so that we could all learn together. Uh, but I'm not. I'm watching a video of a past me trying to figure this stuff out. Uh, and currently, just sitting there doing nothing. Uh, for how long? This is the thing, I'm going to, I'm probably looking up stuff now. Yeah. Okay, maybe I was looking up how to do this. Uh, so the constraints on the rigid body are very handy for, especially for something like this, which is two and a half D, uh, which, because I can, I'm freezing its Z position, so it can't go, it can only, it can't move on the Z axis anymore. So it, it can't go deeper into the level or come out this way. Uh, so that should stop the issue with it kind of falling backwards or forwards. Um, and you can also freeze its, I can freeze its rotation on the z-axis as well, which I think I, I did there, which means that it can't rotate backwards or forwards. It can only rotate that way and that way. Uh, so I, I need to freeze another rotation axis because um, it should only be able to move up and across and it should really only be able to rotate that way. You don't want it to rotate that way, and you don't want it to be able to rotate that way. Um, unless that's what you're going for, because you could have something like that where you could you could have it kind of kind of a cool flying across and then rotating around, spinning, doing little barrel rolls. Uh, that's a design choice. Um, and there's no right or wrong answer. It just depends on what kind of game you want. For the idea that I had for this particular game, um, I don't want it to do that, so uh, I'm sure I'll figure that out at some point. Um, okay, so we have the up moving, or the up working, so when you press spacebar, it goes up. Uh, now I'm doing, if you press A or, or the left arrow, so these two little uh, lines, vertical lines, is OR in code, so if you're pressing the A button or you're pressing the left arrow, you're going to do something. I'm also going to, yeah, if, so I think I'm going to make an or if you press the up arrow. Um, 
it will it'll move. Uh, if I was to put in, so if either one of these comes back true, uh, that's basically an if is a boolean. It's 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 either true or it's false. Um, so if either of those uh, come back true, then whatever I write here will happen. If neither of them are true, this won't happen. So if I'm not pressing any keys, or if I'm pressing the S key or the D key, none of this is going to happen. If I put in two little AND symbols here, it would mean AND. Uh, so if you're pressing A and you're pressing left, so that means that they both have to return true if I had two little AND symbols. They would both have to be true for this to work. If only one of them is true, it won't work. So just something that's, that's kind of handy to know if you want. So if, like, let's say a lot of games uh, like first-person shooters or third-person games, that kind of stuff, on PCs, to sprint, you'd press Shift and W or Shift and Up. So if you wanted to code that, it would be if Shift is pressed and if W is pressed, uh, you will you will sprint. Whereas if just W is pressed, like you could have that else if W pressed, um, it just walks or moves. Excuse me, move slower. Uh, yeah, I find that uh, Red Bull makes me gassy. Just an interesting little tidbit for you there. Just thought I'd share, because you know what, why not? Um, uh, and regular viewers will probably notice that I'm not drinking any Red Bull, which is unusual for me. Um, I do have a can. It is empty. I had a college assignment that I was working on uh, this morning and then a PowerPoint presentation to do um, this afternoon for, for college as well on Microsoft Teams. So I drank my Red Bull then. Uh, and at one point I was taking a gulp, just a big gulp of my Red Bull and some of it just kind of went down my throat as I was gulping it in. So I had a mouthful of Red Bull and then my lungs had a little bit of Red Bull in it and I was trying not to like cough. I was trying to swallow and not cough up, uh, but no, I wasn't able to. So I ended up coughing Red Bull all over the place. So I drenched myself in Red Bull, drenched my chair, my keyboard, my desk, just Red Bull everywhere. Uh, thankfully, it didn't happen during the presentation because that would have been quite funny. Okay, so just a little uh, tangential story. Uh, so what I'm doing here, so if you're pressing A or left, you want to rotate. So your transform.rotation, quaternion.euler angles or Euler angles, or however you pronounce that. Um, this is just a mathematical way, I believe, of calculating the angle. Uh, again, I'm not too good on maths. Uh, it's basically just, you know, rotated by some amount. Um, and I'm not quite sure what quaternion means. I just know that it's always used for rotations. So you'd either do like quaternion.identity is a common thing that you'd be doing if you were using the the rotation of a parented object or the current rotation of that object. Uh, so uh, I th think, oh, you can do local rotation. I think the problem I'm having there is that I should have had a capital OR for that rotation. The same way you'd have like transform.translate, the translate has a capital T, I think transform.rotate, and it would be rotate, not rotation. So um, transform.local rotation cannot be used as a method, which is interesting because it did show that as a fix for the problem I was having. Um, uh, also, there should be another little, uh, should be another little, oh no, there shouldn't now. Quaternion does not contain definition for quaternion. Uh, I do remember finding getting rotations to work incredibly difficult and very annoying. Um, and I might still to this day. I don't think I've actually had to really do rotations that much uh, recently. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So I am probably off on Google right now trying to uh, find out how I can code a rotation. So let's see how long it takes. There we go. Okay. 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 Transform.rotate. So I have actually, I've learned that much that I, I knew that now. 
present me knows that past me did not. Uh, vector three dot forward uh, would, is the same as saying uh, vector three and then having like zero. Like I'd have it up here. So like I said, I could have just put vector three dot up instead of that. So for, instead of vector three dot forward, I, or instead of yeah. Yeah, instead of vector three dot forward, I could have put so forward would be on the x axis. So I could have had the RCS thrust comma zero comma zero. Also, this needs to be multiplied by the RCS thrust so that it, it knows how much it has to actually rotate by. Otherwise, you're just saying rotate in this vector, but not by how much you want to rotate. So. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing, I assume, for the D key in the right arrow. Yep. So then you're going to rotate negative vector 3 dot forward. Uh, and is that right? That's wrong. I believe. If I always have to, to kind of visualize the axes as poles. So um, forward is that way. So it's the x-axis. Um, so if I'm rotating around that, I'm rotating that way. I think that's how it works. So really, if I want to rotate this way, I want to be rotating around the y-axis. So it would actually be uh, vector 3 dot up. I think. Um, axes confuse me. Axes. Uh, so we're going to just test, test it. Just do a little bit of repositioning so that in the game view it actually looks like this is the ground. Um, I'm interested to see if this works. If my prediction is correct, it's going to rotate inwards. And it's not actually going to rotate at all if my prediction is correct because I'm not calling any uh, rotation speeds. But when I am calling rotation speeds, because this, uh, I was just looking at this, this is the x axis. So if I want to rotate around that, oh, maybe I, mm, yeah, well, maybe I am right then. If this is the x-axis rotating it, oh no, wait, yeah, rotating it, it should be rotating it that way. Not up and down, sorry, <laughs> sorry to, hard to show in, in, in two-dimensional screen space. But, so I'm going to press the keys, nothing's happening, it's going up, it's coming down, it's not rotating, oh, oh, oh it is. But is that rotating or is that just because it, it hit something? It didn't seem to be doing anything. Um, and as I just wasn't hitting the keys, I was just watching it go boom. Blah, 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 blah. Um, try it again just to see because I'm not sure. Well, rotate. It does seem to rotate a little bit. Now that is surprising. But, and it goes. Vector 3 dot forward. Rotating it around. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> I am silly. Vector 3 dot forward is the z axis. Right is the x axis, and up is the y axis. So the z-axis is that way, my ship is pointing that way, so I am rotating it that way. Okay. I am surprised that it is rotating with no speed on it, though. Uh, so I would have thought... Uh, maybe it's a standard thing that it's just going to rotate you know, maybe one increment every frame. If you're just rotating vector around the vector three dot forward, um, and you can increase that by multiplying it by speed and time dot delta time and that kind of stuff. Uh, again, if anybody knows, uh, Scott, if you're watching, comment below. You are my Scott is my coding friend. Uh, is a software engineer uh, and has offered to, to teach me anything I want to know about coding which is brilliant, and I'm definitely taking him up on that. Uh, this whole COVID-19 thing, and then the kind of coming up to the end of the year and all my assignments uh, have kind of had to delay our little sessions because he wants to get into game dev as well. So uh, I agreed to teach him Unity, and he can teach me coding, and then together we can make amazing games. So 
maybe you'll see him on the channel at some stage. Uh, that would be pretty cool if he was into that. Um, and I think this is a a good way to see if he if he's watching the videos. So if you are watching, Scott, comment, let me know. Uh, would you be up for appearing on the channel in some in some way? Even if it's just watching one of these videos and then you can critique my awful coding abilities. Uh, and also see a little bit, I can explain to you what I'm doing in Unity. And if you have any questions, uh, that might be cool. Uh, something to do, keep us all busy and sane and you know, give you somebody to talk to. It's always nice. Um, so if you press W or the up arrow, so I'm changing it away from space. Okay, that's fine. Um, maybe somewhere down the line I could implement a shooting mechanic and I'd want the space bar button for that. Uh, and I did have that in mind. I had, I did do, now I didn't sketch out a level, but I did write out a little plan. And I had what I wanted in the game, just a basic, what I would need, the basic game, the core game, gameplay loop what I wanted for that. Uh, and this is the idea of the of the game design onion. So you have your core of the onion, and that is what would be called the minimal shippable product. So your core gameplay loop, so that when you it, when you have the onion and everything in the, the onion core is working, then you have something that could potentially be shipped, and it would work, and it would be fine. Then you put a layer outside of that of other stuff that you would like to add in, um, if you have the time to make it a little bit more interesting or a little bit more fun or just to add little little bits of flavor and then another layer and another layer. Um, and that way you work towards getting the core done first. Um, this is mostly done for uh, professional kind of stuff. Or if you were trying to get something done um, on a deadline, if you did have like a release date, if you were trying to get this a, a game out. Because um, that way then, if you work towards the core, and you get all that done and you have time left over, then you can work on the other layers as as much as possible until you run out of time. And then you, at least then, you know, you'll have a working product. And you might have all these other layers that, that just make it a little bit more fun. Um, so my core is basically just have a ship that flies around, avoids obstacles and gets to the end of the level. Um, my little other layers, outer layers, uh, little things that I could do for fun would be to have a shooting mechanic in it so that you could maybe some enemies that you can kill, um, some walls that have like that block the way forward and but there's a little explosive thing or a button that you have to press or that. They're just little things like that. I, they're not fully fleshed out ideas, but they are ideas uh, that I had written down. So uh, that's probably why I changed from W to from space to W. Um, so, oh yeah. So while I was babbling on there, you could see that I was busy taking the movement out of the update and then just creating it their own little um, functions. So it's just, if you have everything in the update, it gets really hard to read the code. And then I think it, it slows down the game if you have a lot of stuff just going straight from, from update. So I created just a thrust function. So that's the W or the up arrow, it will go up. And I call that in the update function or in the start, yeah, in the update function. Um, so every update is checking if these, every frame of the game, it's checking if these buttons are pressed. And if they are, then it will it will do this thing. And then I've just created another one for the rotation. So A and D, left and right. Still can't believe that I'm not multiplying it by anything. Not even that I'm not multiplying, but I'm not even calling the RCS thrust anywhere. Just read off. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so now I'm putting in an audio source because I'm going to put in music or sound effects. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, we'll see why I'm doing that now. Um, I'm possibly gone off to look up something again. I'm back and back and back. Okay. Uh, ah, okay. So I was looking at how to. I'm going to freeze the rotations. Um, which is an interesting way of doing it because you can't just. I mean. 
again, if anybody knows, uh, okay, that's just the word I'm going to jump out of this for a second. Um, this, I believe, is basically the same as ticking those boxes in the inspector for freeze the rotations of the x, y, and z. Um, so avoid rotate. You can rotate. If you're pressing these, it rotates. And then you can't rotate. I'm not quite sure. I must have looked up a tutorial or something on Google to help me with the coding of the rotation. I'm not entirely sure why I did that or what that means. Um, so, yeah, we'll hopefully we'll find out or figure it out. Because this is the freeze rotation, so I assume it would have just used that writing that in the code is, is basically the same as this. Uh, whoop, and I'm gone. And I'm well gone. Uh, yeah, just move the camera out a bit so I can see more of what I'm doing. I think that is a very good idea. Um, I could also turn the, the main thrust down so it doesn't. So I'm still rotating. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. And hopefully you can see what I mean there about uh, having the rigid body, like using physics to move a ship. You see, like when I stop pressing it, it, it still goes up a little bit because the gravity is counteracting the upward force that I've told uh, Unity to apply to the, the object, and then it starts to fall back down. So it's it's just a little more kind of realistic in some ways, rather than just having it going. Uh, if you stop pressing up, it just... It just stays where it is. Um, so, I've created another cube. And I assume just zero these out to um, just bring them in line because I zeroed this main one uh, out when I brought it in. So any kind of level building I know it's going to be around zero, zero, zero to start off with and then I can uh, if it needs to be the ceiling just bring it up and if it needs to be a wall I can uh, bring it back um, I believe if I'm putting this under the cube this is probably going to be like a landing pad or a launch pad um, I would have one of these at the start of the level and then one of them at the end of the level the one at the start of the level would be where the player would appear at the start of that level, and the one at the end of the level, if you landed on it, would load the next level. And anything else you hit is you're dead. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. Um, duplicate it, yeah, okay. So I have start, oh. Oh, I'm making loads of them. Okay, maybe I'm starting to make some obstacles and some walls and stuff. Um, and I do end up throwing down just, you know, some basic cubes and I block out a rough design of a level just to have something that's uh, fun to try and uh, fly around. Um, so I'm creating one obstacle. So I have to fly over that obstacle uh, just to check that my character is working. And this is the kind of this is the process of of, of prototyping and just iterating on ideas and stuff. So you you just mess around with stuff, see, throw things in to see if they work. If it works, you keep it or you tweak it to make it better. If it doesn't work, you just take it out. So uh, I'm trying to test the movements and I need, because my core game play loop is about moving and uh, avoiding obstacles, now I need to actually test that by just throwing in some obstacles to see um, if 
the movement is kind of responsive enough to be able to uh, navigate around obstacles and stuff? Uh, or is it gonna? Is it too quick? Is it too slow? Is it? Uh, does it rotate too much? You know, all these things that I need to to figure out to get things to a point where it is working the way I want it to be, but it's also fun because that is what we play games for. We play them for fun. Um, it's a multi-billion dollar industry based on having fun. And there ain't nothing wrong with that. So, just lay them out in a pattern that would be somewhat difficult to fly around. Uh, so I've got to go over, under, and then over, and then get to the finish point. That is... Um, my first level, basically. Um, and then you can, again, iterate on that. If this works, then you can kind of go, okay, so... It's a little... The controls aren't quite responsive enough for this. And yes, I know, you could just fly over, but there will be a roof of some description that you can't just do that. Um, interesting. Yeah, so, and that is why serialized fields are great. Great, so I can turn down the thrust. The other thing I could do is turn up the angular, or the, the drag on the rigid body, so, uh, which would increase the wind resistance. Uh, so it would actually make you go a little bit slower. Uh, so I'm multiplying, when you move, so I'm multiplying by time at delta time, but never, Ever still not bringing in the RCS thrust. Uh, I can't tell. It's hard to see in the recording. It's also it's never mind the recording. It's hard to see in uh, in Visual Studio anyway. Sometimes you'll get a little error on a on the semicolon that is very difficult to see. Uh, so. It goes up a little bit slower, so that makes it, you know. Um, plunk. Uh, I don't know if it's that the rotation's not working anymore, or... Um, if, because I'm multiplying by time to delta time, that smooths it out a little bit. Uh, I'm not giving it a speed to rotate by. This is why I was surprised that it rotated without any kind of speed. Um, it's possible. It's possible that had I held down the rotation buttons long enough that it would eventually have started. It might have just been going so slowly, like frame by frame, just kind of went... Um, that is possible, uh, but certainly needs, I mean, what's the point of having the RCS value if I don't use it anywhere? So I, I really do think that I need to have that multiplied by RCS thrust and then multiplied by time that delta time, just to see. Um, and then I can tweak the RCS thrust to make the rotations either quicker or slower. So again, just getting that kind of, you know, uh, gameplay feel into it and, and responsiveness um, kind of thing. So I've gone off to look up why that didn't work. Oh, and I'm back. Okay. I've put in a sound, put a sound component on the, the ship. Uh, I'm just tweaking the, the size of the ship. It doesn't matter what size the ship is. This is just a prototype. That ship's going to go away. Uh, and just make that. Oh, okay. Make that. Okay. Ah, so I can't fly. Well, I mean, I can still fly over, but that just makes it a little bit more difficult. I think that's why I'm doing that. Um, uh, 
and go back into my code. And did I figure it out yet? Did I look it up? Do I know why it's it's not working the way I wanted to? Come on, I know you can do it. I believe in me. And you know what? Even if no one else does, at least I believe in myself. Uh, am I still looking stuff up? Where da, 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 where I'll come back in. Okay, so I found something else online. What has it told me to do? I swear to God. I'm putting in a rotation speed. That is what my RCS. Okay, okay. Oh, that's one way to do it, I guess. Okay. Um, I'm creating a just another variable called rotation speed, and that is going to be equal to whatever my RCS thrust is by time of delta time, so that I can then come in here and say, uh, no, I'd have to multiply the vector three dot forward by my rotation speed. Um, it's basically the same thing as multiplying it by RCS thrust multiplied by time dot delta time, so I don't know why I'm good doing it in this particular uh, way. Uh, I must have seen something online that said this, and at this stage I didn't know any better, so I don't know if there's any benefit to doing it this way, um, rather than, I mean, maybe there is. Uh, Maybe there is. But even still doing that, unless I, uh, here we go, yeah, multiply by rotation speed. I mean, I guess it makes the code a little bit easier to read, because you're just multiplying these by one thing instead of multiplying them by RCS rolls multiplied by time to delta time, you're just multiplying by rotation speed. Uh, it's, it's six to one, really, but, um, as far as I know, but again, I don't know everything. I don't even know a lot about coding. So if anybody does know of a benefit to doing it this way, rather than multiplying it uh, vector three dot forward by RCS speed by time dot delta time, let me know in the comments below. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I think that's some of that red ball still coming up. Um, so now it rotates, it flies. The rotation speed is a little bit too slow. Uh, and this is, like once you have a working prototype, it all becomes tweaking, tweaking the values. Um, so you can see that that was quite slow to, to be able to rotate, then come down. Uh, and then, you know, if, especially if you get to harder levels where you need to be able to, to move quicker. So, uh, so I'm turning up the RCS thrust, so I'm turning up my rotation speed. Um, and we'll see the difference that that makes. So you can fly down. Uh, I mean, flying down is not a good idea anyway, because you don't want to, in a game like this where hitting the ground would kill you, you don't want to thrust towards the ground. Your better option would be to let gravity pull you down and then rotate your ship to the direction it would need to go next. Um, that is just advice from somebody who has actually played this prototype quite a lot. I ended up with three levels. And it, it worked that when you landed on the, the landing pad at the end, it would load level two. And when you got to the landing pad at the end of level two, it would load level three. Anytime you died, you'd go back to the start of level one. Uh, and once I had the three levels of varying difficulty um, and varying layouts, I, uh, I tried to get all the way through to the end and get to the end of level three. And there is somewhere a 13 minute video of me trying to get to the end of a three level prototype because I just kept dying. Uh, and it was infuriating, but also addictive. It, it really was one of those kind of games, like those roguelike, just ridiculously difficult. You're gonna go one more, one more turn, one more try kind of things. Um, I quite enjoyed doing that. Uh, so I'm not gonna, I think I still have that 13 minute video, but I'm not going to subject you all to 13 minutes of me failing. I may put a bit of it up, uh, 
when we get to the relevant video. So once we have all the three levels done, um, I might just pop that up to show you the the, the gameplay and the, the me testing it and 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 failing and failing and failing. Um, but you know, it's a good lesson for life. Don't let failure stop you from trying. You just keep beating at it. I did get it eventually, so and perseverance pays off. So I'm happy to see that I am doing a lot better at my naming conventions. Everything that has gone in has been named correctly. Um, I've got my prefabs folder that has all my prefabs in it. Uh, they're just reusable assets that can be used in any scene. And yeah, so it's it's nice and tidy. And I'm just using collab there. Uh, this is one of the few first one of the first projects or one of the few projects that I actually I used Unity's uh, cloud backup thing um, called Collab. Now, Collab is great because you can have more than one person working on the same project, but it also just backs up everything that you've done to the cloud so that if anything goes wrong with the the file you have on your computer, you, you can just download it from the cloud or access it from another computer if you just log into your Unity account. You can download it from the cloud. And then, you know, back up anything you do on that computer, so you can you can take your work with you wherever you go if you don't have a laptop. Um, and then, as I said, if you're working in a team, you can use Unity Collab so that you can actually be, both be working on the same project at the same time. So I'm just creating a new material called Obstacles. So these obstacles uh, are going to be... What color will I make them? I mean, I know what color they end up. But what color? Oh, let's see. Okay, orange. Random. It could have been any color, really, just to give things a bit of color. Um, so you're now flying around orange obstacles. Um, and then duplicate that to create a new material. This one is going to be the launch pad. So we're just going to change that color to a nice blue. Okay. For those of you that care, blue is my favorite color. Uh, so that's probably why I made them blue. And then another launch pad. So just duplicating it again. And this is going to be the landing pad. And that is going to be green green for go green for good you want to get to the green the safe the safe area so that's going to be the landing pad so again just simple little things get the prototype going and i mean in the space of an hour we have basically a working prototype i have a ship that can fly i have some obstacles for it to fly around and i have Okay, I, I, the ship doesn't die yet, so we're not quite uh, at functional yet. Um, this is just me throwing materials, just trying to make it look a little bit more interesting. Um, but yeah, so obviously I need to work on the ship being destroyed if it hits any the ground or the uh, obstacles. And then I obviously need walls so that you can't fly outside of the screen and a, a ceiling so that you can't just fly over everything. And then I need to make it so that the landing pad, well, I need to make a second level before I can actually uh, implement the landing pad loading a second level. But uh, for all intents and purposes, this is a working prototype. Or at least the be we're halfway to having a completely working prototype. Uh, once... Once you can die, even without the, the second level or any other levels, once you actually can die and you're constrained into the bounds of the screen, that is a working prototype. That is the core gameplay loop. Fly, avoid the obstacles, don't die. And that's it. That's all I'm working on. And we are almost there. Uh, we won't get there in this video because it's almost over. Uh, but in the next video, we will get there um we will be i don't know when i do it but it, it, i assume it's going to be soon we will also get the obstacles moving just to throw in a little bit more difficulty and we will have particle effects so the ship will have a thruster i believe 
um, and there will be explosions when you die. And I added an audio source, but there's no audio. I do bring music into this um, and possibly sound effects. I might have a little <laughs> ship thrusty sound effect. Um, so the movement still needs some tweaking just to get the levels right. But uh, other than that, you know, we're basically uh, over halfway to having a complete working prototype. And I think that's, I don't really do anything else in this video. Uh, I tag, oh, I do tag. So I create a tag of friendly. Okay, just before we go. So the ground is not friendly. The launch pad is friendly. And the reason, the only reason I'm setting this up is that um, you, I will use the tags to, to, to specify what the ship can touch and what the ship can't. Uh, so uh, obviously the launch pad and the landing pad are friendly, so you can touch them. Everything else will be unfriendly or dangerous or damaging or whatever tag I end up using for that. Um, I don't know why I'm playing it again because just making the tags, I'm not, I'm not using them. But everything else will have another tag so that if I touch them, I can say, I can say in code that if the ship touches anything with this tag, uh, it will die. And that's how I'll implement. <clears throat> excuse me. That's how I will implement that. And I'm pretty sure I will implement that in the next video. Oh, this is interesting. I do remember seeing this, right? I had a thought of what if I had a game or made a game where you controlled more than one ship at a time, but they all moved the same. Could you get, and the goal was to get at least one of them to the, uh, to the finish line or even like there was a power up that, that made your ship duplicate itself. And uh, I think they've done stuff like that with uh, pinball computer games and stuff where more balls just come out and you have to, but you're not controlling them all at the same time like this. So you'd have to kind of go, oh, da, 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 da. and it just gets really confusing because if they, well, I mean, those ones that hit the walls would be dead. It would, it would get chaotic. Uh, I still think it's an interesting idea and it might be like a bonus level kind of thing or something to work on just to get one of them to the finish line. Um, but if I was going to do that, I would probably want to maybe just change the mass of each ship or the drag on them so that they don't control exactly the same so that they move through the space slightly differently or, or fall slightly quicker or slower than others so that you um, just be a little bit different. So I'm going to do one more uh, collab and just upload my, turn it on, upload it. Yeah, that's fine. So that's basically the end of this one. So cool. So, I mean, we got a fair bit done in this. I, uh, as I said, I've got half, well, over half of a working prototype. I, I brought in the ship. I say brought in the ship. I, I made a, a simple ship out of uh, standard primitives and coded it so that it moved. And I have some obstacles for it to fly around and a starting point and an end point. Um, so the rest, all well, that's left to do really is to uh, get the damaging damage being done and get the obstacles moving. And we will do that next time or over the next few videos anyway. I don't know how long this series is going to be. Um, I have a number of videos recorded, but I, I don't know how long they are or exactly what's on them. So uh, we shall have to wait and see. But uh, for now, I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. Um, consider sharing it with people that might be interested in this kind of content. And uh, as always, if you want, you can subscribe so that you can keep up to date with everything that I'm doing. There's a lot more on the way um, and I can't wait for you all to see it. So thanks very much. And I will see you next time.